and the question is a processor can support a maximum memory of 4 GB where the memory is word addressable and word addressable means here a word has two bytes okay in this question whenever you will refer to a word it would be representing two bytes all right the size of the address bus of the processor is at least dash bit so it is a numerical type of question in which you have to find out the size of the address bus and there are no options given so since we are given that the maximum memory is 4 gb so converting this into bytes maximum memory is equal to 4 gb now you can convert these value in the powers of 2 so 4 can be represented as 2 raised to power 2 and 1 GB is equal to 2 raised to power 30 bytes. Alright, so we can say that the total memory is equal to 2 raised to power 2 multiplied by 2 raised to power 30 bytes which gives 2 raised to power 32 bytes in all. Alright, next what we have is that we are given that the memory is word addressable. Now what do we mean by word addressable? That means one address represents one word in the memory and here for our question one word is significant of two bytes. So suppose if the memory layout is like this, you can imagine the memory layout like this in which two consecutive bytes are lined together. So this is one byte, this is another byte and a single address is assigned to the combination of these two bytes. So this would be address 1. Alright, the next address would be assigned to the combination of the next pair of bytes. This is address 2 and so on. And you, ha you have been told that the memory is word addressable. So we can say that each address addresses two bytes in the memory okay so you know the formula the basic formula for calculation in such questions is that the maximum memory is equal to the number of addresses multiplied by the number of bytes used to represent each address okay number of bytes per address you can say Okay, so we are given the maximum memory here is 2 raised to power 32 bytes that we are calculated which is equal to 4 GB. Then we have to find out the number of addresses. So I am writing it as X and multiplied by the number of bytes per address. Number of bytes per address is 2. So X multiplied by 2 and this calculation or this value of x comes out to be 2 raised to power 32 by 2 which is equal to 2 raised to power 31. Now please be careful that this 2 raised to power 31 is the number of addresses and it is not the size of the address bus. So if total number of addresses are 2 raised to power 31 then the total number of address lines or the size of the address bus would be 31 okay so here the answer would be 31 and not 2 raised to power 31 because using 31 lines or 31 address lines you can represent total of 2 raised to power 31 combinations and that would be representing your addresses all right okay so now proceeding with the second question the question says that a processor has 40 distinct instructions and 24 general purpose register. A 32-bit instruction word has an opcode, two register operands and an immediate operand. The number of bits available for the immediate operand field is. Okay, so the instruction or you can say the layout that has been given for each 32-bit instruction word is as okay, if I represent this instruction word like this there are there is an opcode field so first field is opcode then there are two fields for two register operands okay so register operand 1 then register operand 2 and then comes the immediate operand immediate operand all right and this entire 
instruction word is 32 bits in length. So we know that or it is given to us that there are 40 distinct instructions. Each opcode represents a particular instruction. That means in each instruction word we would be specifying one out of the 40 distinct instructions. So to establish or to make 40 distinct uh, combinations from x number of bits we need 2 raised to power x equal to or greater than 40 okay so okay I'll tell you in another way that uh, if we have 5 bits we have 32 combination if we have 6 bits with us we can make a maximum of 64 combinations since we need 40 different combinations to represent 40 different instructions so we would need some number of bits that lie between 5 and 6 since if we choose 6 bits we would be able to represent all the 40 combinations therefore we choose 6 bits to represent the opcode field okay similarly each register field has to have certain number of bits that are able to represent all 24 possible register. So since the value 24 lies between 16 and 32, 32 is 2 raised to power 5, 16 is 2 raised to power 4. So to represent 24 different registers, we would use 5 bits each. Okay, 5 bits will be able to represent a total of 32 combinations. Some of them would be invalid but 24 out of them would be able to represent general purpose registers in this case. So register 1 would take 5 bits and register 2 would also take 5 bits in this 32 bit instruction word. Now the remaining bits out of 32 would be allocated to the immediate operand field. Therefore the number of bits allocated for immediate operand field would be total of 32 minus 6 plus 5 plus 5. Okay, this is the total bits. These are the bits, 6 bits that are used to represent the opcode field. These 5 bits are used to represent the first register operand and the next 5 are used to represent the second register operand so this gives a total of 32 minus 16 which is equal to 16 so the answer is 16 so that's all for today's lecture these were two questions very easy questions based on computer architecture subject and if you practice such questions you'll be able to do them very quickly when they come in the exam is the size of data count register of a dma controller that is direct memory access controller is 16 bits the processor needs transfer of needs to transfer a file of 29154 kilobytes from the disk to the main memory the memory is byte addressable at the minimum number of times the dma controller needs to get control of the system bus from the processor to transfer the file from the disk to the main memory is all right so in this question you are given that the data count register is of 16 bits so size of data count register is 16 bits and what does this indicate this indicates that in one go the total amount of words or the number of words that can be transferred by a DMA controller would be 2 raised to power 16. Okay, so uh, the data count register is 16 bits. This implies that the total number of words that can be transferred or that can be sent by the DMA controller in one go, in a single go equals to 2 raised to power 16 words and since it is provided to you that the memory is byte addressable this refers or this means that 
each word corresponds to one byte so instead of 2 raised to power 16 words i can also write as 2 raised to power 16 bytes all right so this is the amount of words or the number of bytes that can be transferred by the dma controller at one point or at one time in a single time instant these many bytes can be transferred and how many total bytes we have to transfer 29154 kilobytes so how many times will the dma controller need to get the control of the control bus to get all the to transfer all these kilobytes this total amount divided by this amount okay why because this is the amount that has to be transferred the total amount of bytes that have to be transferred and this is the amount of bytes that can be transferred in one uh, instant or when a dma controller gains a con the control of the system bus in one instance it can transfer only these many bytes the next 2 raised to power 16 bytes would be transferred in the next instance or the next time the dma controller gains the access okay now the next important thing that you have to be careful about and students generally make mistakes about is that here the unit is bytes and here the unit is kilobytes so we can easily convert this unit this value into kilobytes we can say or we can refer to this value as 64 kb because 2 raised to power 6 is 64 and 2 raised to power 10 bytes is 1 kilobyte so this is equal to 64 kb file size that we have to transfer is equal to 29154 kb number of times the minimum number of time the system bus the control of the system bus has to be taken by the dma controller would be the total file size 29154 divided by 64 and when you calculate this it this value would come out to be 456 all right so this was a very direct and straightforward question total bytes divided by the bytes that can be transferred when the dma controller takes the control of the system bus in one time okay or at a time only these many bytes can be transferred so now switching from this question to the second one the second one it talks about set associative memory now what is a set associative memory it is basically a, a way of caching the memory instances or it is a way of maintaining a cache and sets and lines that have blocks within them so let's start with the question and this concept will be clearer to you the question is the width of the physical address on a machine is 40 bits the width of the tag field in a 512 kb 8 way set associative cache is these many bits all right so whenever we have such a question you must remember that the format of accessing the address or a particular location is the tag field that means whenever we specify an address or a memory location that has to be accessed the parts the different fields of that address is the tag field the set field and the third one is the block offset field all right so it is given to you that it is a eight way set set associative cache eight way set associative means that one set has eight cache lines one set has eight lines all right and it is given to you that the five the size of the cache is 512 kb and the physical address is of 40 bits so what information can you infer from these two things the cache size 
is 512 kb and if we write 512 kb in terms of uh, power of 2 i'll write it as 2 raised to power 19 bytes all right and the size of the memory the main memory since the physical address is of 40 bits the size of the main memory would come out to be 2 raised to power 40 okay so this is the size of uh, the cache this is the size of the main memory so each cache line or uh, to map all these 2 raised to power 40 locations to the cache of size 512 we need multiple blocks to be mapped to one particular cache line okay so for 2 raised to power 40 addresses and 2 raised to power 19 addresses present in the cache we need a mapping of Two raised to power forty divided by two raised to power nineteen, which is equal to two raised to power twenty one. This means that two raised to power twenty one blocks will be mapped to a single cache line. Mapped to one cache line. Okay, now let me combine all this. One set has eight lines. 8 cache lines each of this line maps 2 raised to power 21 blocks okay each line maps 2 raised to power 21 blocks or it can it refers to or it addresses 2 raised to power 21 blocks therefore what we can say that one set has a total of 2 raised to power 3 into 2 raised to power 21 blocks now this value is equal to 2 raised to power 24 blocks. Okay. If one set has 2 raised to power 24 blocks. Therefore the size of the tag field. The tag field would be of 24 bits. Alright. This is a direct calculation from here. So in this question you have to be very clear about how each cache line is referencing each block and how each set has multiple cache lines so a particular set contains multiple cache lines and each of these lines contains multiple blocks so a set will contain a total number of blocks which would be equal to the number of lines multiplied by the number of blocks in each line and that is what we have done number of lines in each set multiplied by the number of blocks in each line all right so that is why since one set or each set contains 2 raised to power 24 blocks therefore the tag field would be of 24 bits so that's all for today's lecture if you understood both these questions, please mention in the comment section below. Subscribe to our channel for more such tutorials on previous year GATE, UGC NET and Bank IT Officer exams. Thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned. Keep watching. Good luck.